Welcome to our NAB coverage 2016. Uh, I don't even know how to start our videos anymore. But they are made possible by Black Magic Design, so there's that's our sponsor. Thank you to them. Um, so if this is the first one you guys are watching, uh, you will notice a different format. We're doing our NEB coverage differently this year rather than doing booth interviews and having to rush around and not get much time with the products. We've decided to do summary videos. So we went there, we checked everything out. We're reporting back to you guys what we thought was important and relevant and cool. Uh, we've got Mike, Sean, Tony, Kurt. Bet you you Kurt can says guess a lot. what this one's about. We're talking about... VR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we we were trying to decide like you know what what are the topics we were going to cover and when we got to NAB we discovered VR is going to be its own video because um, there were a lot of things that were prevalent in VR. There were cameras, there were editing, there were all sorts of stuff, and so we decided let's make it its own video. Um, we Sean and I both have a, a Vive. We just got in our HTC Vives. We have Gear VR. As I've owned an Oculus DK2. Sean is now sporting just got that handsome. today. He just got his uh, Oculus Rift CV1 so in. I'll make my decision on which one I'm going to keep. Uh, you're going to keep the Vive. We, uh, probably the Vive. Yeah, I just wanted to get a comparison to see. Let's get into a heavy VR debate right here. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> um, so VR, we are addicted to it. I, I really do believe it's the next uh, entertainment medium. I mean, it's to me, it's like the jump between radio and television. You know? And uh, a lot right now, we're in that weird phase where when when there was a move from radio to television, a lot of people were shooting TV the way that they shot, you know, radio. It was just uh, yeah, it was like theater, theater too yeah. as well. So it wasn't until a few years into that people like took advantage of the medium and figured it out. Yeah. And we're in that weird, uncanny valley of content right now where people are just trying to figure out how the heck it works. Um, so, of course, you know, v consumer VR just really came out, you know, not counting the gear VR. Uh, we have the, the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive as both options. And now people are trying to figure out how it works. Now, some people may be thinking, oh, VR, that's like 3D. It's just going to be a fad. And I really don't think it's like that. I think it's uh, it's a much more immersive medium. The, the the challenge, though, is with 3D, you can kind of shoot 3D the way that you shot 2D in the past. You know, you granted, you had to have two cameras and or two lenses or whatever like that. But for the most part, they were shooting it the same. VR is different. You cannot shoot VR the way that you shot uh, any other medium. Like, it's yeah. its own thing. And so with that we're seeing VR cameras, we're seeing VR editing, we're seeing uh, new VR platforms coming out. Uh, so let's just go, let's just jump right into it. VR editing, first of all. Uh, we mentioned this in the post-production video, um, but HP is adding native support for 360 videos. Um, you can actually pop on your headset you and Adobe, edit. Adobe? Uh, yeah, Adobe. What did I say? HP. HP. Is that so the HP booth? Yeah, was that the HP that, booth? Yeah, HP booth. Metal is M-E-T-T-L-E is the developing the plugin, but I think they're going to integrate it into Adobe automatically. Yep. So watch the post-production video for more information on that, but you can literally edit in VR and play back in VR. Um, so that's that's cool. I mean, the fact that yeah. it's consumer VR is here and Adobe's right on top of it. That's mm -hmm. kudos yeah. to them. Um, yeah, yeah. I would suggest that uh, don't judge VR experiences based on 360 videos because that's not a true VR experience. But Right, which we will, we will definitely talk about get into. HP 3D Workstation, we mentioned that in post-production as well. Um, yeah, not detail. necessarily VR, but... Kind uh, of a hybrid between 3D right. and VR, because you have the added functionality of being able to manipulate. Right. Um, one other cool thing that I saw there, I can't remember the name of the company, but we'll show the company, clips of it. It was a Korean company, I think, weren't they? Uh, there, there was an actual whole VR pavilion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the past, any of these had, like, you know, you'd see a VR camera here, you'd see 3D as a thing. But there was, like, a whole pavilion section of VR. It was pretty cool. Um, so we... You know, we were we were checking all the different things, and there was one little Korean company that had this thing that they were, they would like walk around and kind of wave this scanner back and forth, and it was doing photographic scans and lidar. What was unique about it is that they were just kind of walking through a hallway, yeah, and it was scanning as it went. So they would they would tilt it up and down so you get the floor and the ceiling. It, it had a whole vest system with arms and everything, so you walk through. One of the coolest things about it though is through their through capturing the algorithm 
is that you can do it in a crowded area. You know, like people would be, uh, they would take the people out of it. Like the, one of the demos that they did, they walk through a subway in Korea or something like that, and they're doing it with people, and it would remove the people. It would just capture the geometry of the place. Yeah, it was it was really neat. Just the, the how they did it. Yeah. Um, just to, and it was just a very simple thing. Now, right now, the quality is is very low. It's nothing fancy. Yeah. Uh, but they're hoping to improve that as they go. So. I don't know if that's going to be a major consumer product at some yeah. point. Yeah, obviously when you lidar scan, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of points. That's, there's a lot of vertices. It's just raw data, so you're creating geometry with a lot of bulk that you don't need. So they run an algorithm to lighten that, but of course that's not perfect. Any if you've ever tried to take a model heavy, um, heavy polygons and just automatically reduce it, you usually get crappy results. Um, some problems just because the computer doesn't think like we do to recognize certain so shapes. So the challenge that you have with it in 3D or in VR is that um, you can have rotational tracking and then there's positional tracking where you actually move around the space. Rotational tracking is easy with 3D, 360 um, photography uh, or 360 video. But if you want to actually move around a space, then you, there's things like photogrammetry where you can actually take not only photos of the space, but also uh, LiDAR 3D scans. And then you map that photography over the top of the, the geometry inherent to the name photogrammetry. Um, and then you have that, those scans that you can move around. Um, that, that, so that it's easier to do with a still because you're, phys you're nothing's moving. You don't have to have the, all the stuff. Uh, a company that we didn't really see at NAB, but we bump, uh, came across on the Steam right. store. which I actually downloaded that and checked it out. Yeah, already. I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but I, I downloaded it for my vibe. It's called Presence is it with a Z, um, and uh, their stuff is actually pretty cool because they're they're basically working with not live action yet, but three D animation. Well, they're yeah, three D animation. They can do they can do human scans too. Yeah, they're gonna be doing that soon. Where you would do like uh, the, I forget the name of it. There's another player where it's volumetric capture, they call it, where you can have an actual actor and it uh, maps their geometry but also takes uh, projects the, the video or the photo that they've been taking of it live onto it as it moves. Uh, so you can kind of integrate those two technologies. I'll just, I'll just kind of take over a little bit because uh, I was checking it out. Um, so it's kind of merging you having a 3D engine because you know, you get true virtual reality when you're working in a game, you have an engine with 3D objects, polygons moving around, you get parallax you can move around anywhere you want. With 360 video, like I said, it's just mapped on the inside of a sphere and you only have your rotational track and you can't get any parallax, you can't move in and out and uh, things like that. So um, obviously it's, you know, proprietary the way that they do it, but it's kind of combining those two things together uh, where they're only doing it with 3D scenes, but you can render a 3D scene, whether it's animated or still. Um, and I don't know if they're using simplified geometry or just, you know, because you have to use their their stuff, you know, their player, and then, of course, their plug-in to render it. But it works with existing workflows, existing Maya workflows. You just render it out, and it renders out a space. Like, you can move within a space and actually see everything in 3D. And they call it a zone of view instead of a point of view. Yeah, so you can walk out of that zone, and then actually in VR, when you're in it, you'll see the box uh, that you can be in, and then you walk back into it, and then you're in the scene, and you can walk around that. And uh, so you can have that parallax, you can have things happening right next to you, and it feels natural because you're in there. And I know, I mean, obviously it's very new. There were some issues with, like, uh, you know, some edges and uh, anti aliasing, some other kind of imperfections or artifacts that are created. But um, it's just rendering those possible viewpoints all at once. And then when it's in its game engine or whatever you use, it's, it doesn't have to be very, you're not having lighting. You know, you're not having to recreate lighting. It's all baked in, all that stuff. So it's... Um, yeah, the idea is that you can have, like, Pixar-level graphics or higher um, with uh, with that, that... So that level of fidelity, yeah. but still have the game engine... And it runs real around, smooth because like it's all, all that's baked in. You have pre-rendered it, um, and it's just being projected onto that geometry that's in the scene or whatever they're doing it. I mean, I'm, that's just what I'm guessing how they do it. Right. Uh, simplified version of that. So that's... Again, the, so, so that's, that, that's animation and stuff like yeah. that. So live action capture. Uh, right now, the only options that we really have are um, Lytro is working on a VR sphere camera that would allow for some level of parallax. That, again, as we talked about in our other video about cameras, Lytro cameras are going to be crazy expensive. 
So let's just put that aside. Yeah. It doesn't even exist yet. So what are the things that we can use? Well, um, the big player of all things is Nokia. They come yeah, out I'm actually really surprised that, like, <laughs> oh, Nokia's here. Yeah, Nokia. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would not expect uh, Nokia <laughs> to be... <laughs> yeah. That's what they had playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so Nokia had the Ozo, um, and that was a spherical... 3D, uh, 360 degree, uh, 8K. I think it was shooting in the resolution. Yeah, if it, like yeah, and it's well, it's all 3D. Of course, that's the cool part about. It. Well, it's. I mean, there are there are other there's other rigs that are 360, 3D. Um, but that's it, more panoramic. So we'll get to that when we get to the GoPro. There aren't a lot well, of 3D, uh, 360 spherical. There's we did panoramic. run into the one with, that we remember. There was one that had the two. There, we did rub. No, that was. I'm sorry. There's not a lot of the 3D ones out there. Yes. I apologize. Okay. But the, it's 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 basically it's claim to fame right now is that it's streaming live that way as well. Yes. 3D, 360. Cool. So yeah, and and like if you've seen any uh, advertisements, um, uh, VR 360 advertisements for like the Jungle Book. Disney yes. has been partnering with Ozo to create right. a lot of VR content. Their uh, their cast interview they did with the Ozo, you can find that online as well. So it's right now it's it's one of the highest end VR 360 experiences. It does 3D. They did some stuff. Now we tried it out, and to be honest, it was okay. Yeah. It wasn't like my gosh, this is amazing because we tried some other cameras, which we'll mention in a little bit, and and. For the price difference, like the Ozo system is like fifty or sixty thousand dollars. It's yeah, it's crazy yeah, expensive. It is right. not something, and, cost and the amount of data that it captures is unbelievable. Yeah, uh, so you had, they had a, they had like a, a rack server in the back, you know, that just was, to capture know. the yeah, it was ridiculous. It takes a lot. The w one cool thing about it as well is it has integrated uh, mics into it, eight mics, so you already have you're capturing um, you know the three hundred sixty degree. Uh, soundscape as well, not having to do that separately, and that's all built in. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't remember uh, how it works exactly, but you can actually, it will actually, like, with the mics, it will actually, um, like, concentrate on someone if they're talking, kind of like, you know, like, uh, so it, it's like, it's pretty smart design for sound, all built in. Um, one of the things that, uh, when it comes to content, that, you know, kind of just a, that when I was viewing, they had some stations there, they had the Vive, the uh, the Rift, the uh, Gear Samsung Gear VR, um, is that they had one scene from True Crime that they recreated, and it was so it was a 360. So there's this thing going on. There's a group of agents or whatever they are, FBI agents around, and they're like confronting this one. And so you're like right there, you know. You look back and forth, and then and then I realized as I was looking, you know, cool. Then I heard something from behind me, and I, so I had to like turn all the way and look. And there's this guy talking. I'm like, that wouldn't happen, you know. That was annoying. Like I, I didn't feel immersed. I felt like, why am I in the center of the action? I should, if I was part of the scene, I would be on the outer rim, like we are here, and I'd be talking to you guys. Like I'd be a person here, and observing this thing happening right here. I wouldn't yeah. be in the middle of it. And there's some weird stuff that everything's plagued with these wide-angle lenses. When you get close, you get weird stitching issues because of how the you know, optics work and everything. Yeah, there's like an optimal distance, and you get outside of that or inside. You know, it, it can be but it's pretty. It was still pretty good. Uh, but you know, you have those issues. You just have to work around those. Just like with any camera, you know, yeah. you have you have to work around those issues. Right, so Ozo, you, you guys are probably not going to interact with it. So you know, it's it's great, but. You know, yeah, I don't know. It, well, it's, I mean, it's it's like which is everything in here. I think it's a step in the right direction. Right. Mm -hmm. So next option would be GoPro. We saw some rigs where people would kind of stitch together, slap together GoPro VR. We I I tried a DK one last year with it, and it was like, wow, this is the first you know three sixty you know low resolution okay stuff. So GoPro is now officially supporting that. They have their own. Um, they have two different models. They have the Omni, which is a 360 degree six camera rig that does uh, mono video and then there's the odyssey which is a panoramic 360 so it doesn't do, do like top and bottom it just does panoramic yeah. um and that's stereo so that is 3d um and that's why you can say this it's kind of complicated like that's a 16 camera rig uh there is no perfect system right now mm -hmm. that seems to do everything um. <laughs> Jimmy's cleaning uh, <laughs> cleaning his windshield right now that had bird poop it. on I it. I knew he was going to do it. <laughs> uh, we have a saying over here, it's not clean until it's Jimmy clean. Yeah. <laughs> He's cleaning my car. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good problem to have. Oh, yeah. 
You don't have to clean the poo off yeah, now. No, I don't have to <laughs> clean the so anyways, off now. We love Jimmy. Yes. No, GoPro, you know, that's great. Do the math. Six GoPro cameras. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're just the housing with all the connectors in there. It was like fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. It, so it the whole sinks system them and was like it five or six thousand dollars. Yeah. And now he's cleaning. Now he's cleaning. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah oh my god. <laughs> um. So, anyways. Okay. So GoPro, you you know think okay that might be a cost effective option, not for five or six grand. I'm not going to buy one of those. So we were, we were looking around, and there were there was a three thousand dollars system here, a four thousand dollars system here. Where is the affordable yeah. VR? Right. Guess where it came from? Ding yeah. ding ding. Guess Samsung it. of all yeah. places. Now I had heard about the Gear three hundred and sixty, and I had been looking at that for a while. I'm like, okay, when are they going to announce the pricing? I want to know. And uh, you know, I, I hadn't heard anything. I'm like, it's got to be under a thousand dollars because right. You know, they're they're aiming at a the way that they're market. exactly. You know, it's just how Samsung is. So we hunted down their booth, which wasn't easy to find. They were like in the way off corner of, a, of one of the booths. We got there, and again, their 360 camera was way tucked around back. Yeah, it wasn't prominent. Their little, TVs were their, their displays were more prominent. Yeah, so yeah. I'm getting there, and I'm like, okay, where is the thing? You guys have a 360, and they do. And so we popped on the Gear VR, and I tried it out, and amazingly, the quality was good. I was very impressed for the form factor and the price. Because so what it is is 290-degree cameras. Just two cameras on a ball that's mm -hmm. just they, it stitches in the camera. Now, the integration is what's awesome. So yeah. if you have a Samsung camera you know, or a Samsung phone, so I've got a Note 5. Sean's got a Note 5. I have my Samsung Gear S here. We have a Gear VR. We have a lot of Samsung stuff. You know, things integrate really well with Samsung lights. If you have a Samsung phone, um, you can actually, it'll work directly with that phone. But if it doesn't, you'll still have an SD card that you can pop yep. out, put into Adobe Premiere, which now natively edits yep. VR stuff. So it is only mono, so it's not stereo, mm -hmm. which honestly at this point is, is okay. It's not that, you know, big of a thing to have 3D. Right. I didn't notice like a life changing experience between the 3D versions and the, and the mono versions. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, that's the thing is that from setup to setup that everybody's going through, I didn't notice a huge, like uh, someone that had, wow, that stood out to me in quality. No one had that wow factor. Right. It was all like, this is GoPro stuff type stuff. You know I mean? It's okay. Um, you know, it's a good start, but it's not really wowing me right so now. So the Gear 360, uh, 350 bucks. Now they haven't announced yeah. official U.S. pricing yet, but that's um, about where to be. Yeah, that's where the mm -hmm. it's based upon the official pricing that they announced in uh, what is it, South Korea. Korea. Yeah. They sold out in South Korea actually, yeah. and if you look on eBay, you can actually order one from South Korea if you want. Yeah. So uh, the U.S. release is, is very soon, probably within weeks or months. Yeah, I just um, wait till then. Uh, so, but yeah, but I'm doing. I'm gonna get one. We even talked to them, and we might even be doing some content for Next Wave DB. So we'll see if that yeah. happens. Um, Where we can have I'm like very, a very very excited scenes. about the quality was was admirable. It wasn't mind blowing, but none of them were mind blowing. Right, three hundred fifty bucks. So that's the price. That's where it yeah. needs to be. Yeah. Yep. The only other thing that uh, stood out to me was the Lucid Cam. I did uh, the Indiegogo on that. I hopefully will be coming by the end of the year. Everything gets delayed. It was supposed to be July, but I know it's gonna be July. Um, and that's more aimed at like a GoPro experience where it does like 180 degree, but that is stereo and the quality in those were pretty good. I tried some of those videos out mm -hmm. and that price was around like three or 400 bucks. Mm -hmm. So, um, I can see, you know, that, so that was the only other option, but the, what? the Samsung V gear 360, I, I think is something that should be, I, I do have uh, now for price point, I don't think anything really beats that for the quality that you get i mean it's for the price point uh i didn't see anything really better than that now, maybe the ozo you know but that's out of realm yeah, of, but i mean that's sixty thousand dollars yeah. but even at sixty thousand dollars i, I didn't think it was like, worth sixty you would think <laughs> like you would think it was oh my quality. gosh this yeah. should be way better and and for for like uh vr the technology it's just hard is, to do a hard real do vr it, production yeah yeah because where are you going to put the light stands where are you going <laughs> to like so yeah. vr is never going to be this like overly produced thing yeah. So it's, it was very difficult. What we'd love to do, like, imagine we stuck a camera in the middle of one of our sets, and now you guys are on set with us. It's a lot more interesting than just a GoPro fixed angle. Yeah. Like, you can look around, you can look wherever the heck you want. Even like, even with a couple of Gear VRs, it plays them in certain hot spots around the set, and you just move between them. Yeah, so that's those are things that we, we're interested in and we want to we experiment with. Not at 50 grand, not right. at 5 grand. Yeah. At 350 right. bucks, sure. 
Mm-hmm. Again, maybe one or two of them. Like, I, like so that that I'm interested in. The, um, to uh, to kind of uh, pull in because we're talking about cameras. There's a place that I visited that you guys didn't see, um, called the Itania. I'm not probably totally uh, mix, miss. Can't talk. Screwed up that name. Uh, it's a fisheye lens, and uh, you can use that in uh, conjunction with RE Vision Effects RE lens. Uh, so we'll start off with the first one. So the um, that window cleaner. Uh, so it it is a re- lens replacement for the GoPro. So just keep in mind that you have to take the lens out of your GoPro and you do have to destroy it a little bit in order to put this lens in. And it's a very easy procedure. Watch the video online, and you know not difficult, but you do have to break off some tabs. So you will you have to use a Avoiding GoPro your, for this. Yeah. yeah, you'll avoid your warranty. So something to keep in mind. Uh, But it's a fisheye lens. It's actual optical lens, and they have different uh, fields of view, 220, 250, like 280. And I think like the 220 one is only like uh, 500 bucks for the lens. So, I mean, we're getting closer to the lower end. Uh, So anyways, you'd screw that in. And so now you have a 220 degree. It's not full 360, but you don't always need 360 for some things. The thing that I would have an issue with that, though, is like – your the maximum you can shoot on the GoPro is 4K. Mm-hmm. Right, so, so you, I mean that's probably you have that resolution, but that's what the whole everything else still has that problem right now too. Right, but but the Gear 360, for example, there each one of the lenses is recording sub 4K. It's just just below it. I think it's like three something K or something like that. So that's what they're each one of those things are recording. So right. you're technically getting a clear cleaner image. From those sure. Yeah. So that I mean that those are because we talked about that. Like, right. do you get a what? What about a panoramic lens? What about this? What about that? Mm-hmm. Um, if you use one camera to record a bigger image, now each pixel is being stretched and pushed. Each pixel is being stretched and pushed even further mm-hmm. than it really should be. And so, the, yeah, there's a lot of things to consider. So, so yeah, so so it is interesting. Uh, it's another solution. You can do two back to back, and then you have a full 360. Uh, so you, or you can even just do the fish islands. So, anyways, that that's that's uh, a pretty cool thing. It's a lower lower end cost. Excuse me. And uh, the other thing is the RE lens, which is pretty cool. RE colon lens, and that's with uh, vision effects. What it allows you to do is several things. It allows you to take uh, something that's enormously fish eyed and unstretch it. But you can take some very extreme fisheye lens things and turn them into a um, a certain amount of degree experience. Uh, so like uh, like if you have uh, you know a, a two uh, one hundred and eighty or a two hundred degree field uh, fisheye and like you're on a parade, well you can now stretch that back and you can actually put it into the program and be able to use it to look around and you won't be able to look behind you, but who looks behind you in a parade? Um, so now you have that the functionality, uh, and you can do that even with just a regular camera. If you have a fisheye lens, someone did a time lapse, and you're actually able to look around the room while the time lapse is going on with an extreme fisheye lens. So it's just a really cool uh, way to unstretch your fisheye type things that works with multiple types of lenses. It doesn't have to be for a specific use. You, so you can kind of create some cool content. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, Zeiss will mention briefly if you don't have a Samsung phone and that you want to gear VR. If you don't have uh, as, uh, Oculus or, or a, a Vive or anything like that. Uh, uh, Zeiss is your best bet. Yeah, Zeiss, yeah. The, the VR1 is probably the best quality VR headset. Now, it's never going to be the same quality as a true VR headset. Google Cardboard is not true VR. <laughs> I really want to emphasize that. The IMUs of your phone are not the same level as the sensors built into these VR headsets with the additional tracking and all that kind of stuff. Right. And the Gear VR is the best mobile VR experience you can have because they have the IMUs actually built into the headset that interface with your phone give you that Oculus quality of tracking. Google Cardboard is a little though, bit... At just rotational, yes. At this time. But... It's it, Google Cardboard is not that as good. It's just not. It's just it's a that. fun, cheap way to, to get an experience. That said, if you want, if you're insistent about having Google Cardboard experience, whether for your iPhone or your Android phone, the Zeiss uh, the one best thing. is awesome. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. their VR one is really good quality. Optically, it's great. It's especially optically superior in some ways to what? even the Vive and the the Riff. Yeah, I'll just explain that real quick. I'll be quick. Don't worry. No, you won't. <laughs> uh, so, so I tried out the optics. One thing that I thought was really cool is that the sweet spot is huge. 
Uh, Jimmy's naked over there. Um, the sweet spot is huge uh, for the lens. Uh, and that was because I noticed that with the Vive, you know, you have to be have to have it right in the center, you know, just your IPD, you know, to get a nice clear. And then it gets blurry pretty quick, even more than your normal periphery on your eyes. Um, I haven't tried out the Rift yet. I'll try that out. Uh, but it's very similar. I think it has a little larger sweet spot. But uh, now the way to explain it to me is that because uh, we're dealing with uh, conical lenses, you know, that come up, they're rounded on top. Uh, so you have a small sweet spot, but theirs are flattened out more. Um, and that, so you have a larger sweet spot because of the way it's flattened. And I think that either the, I think one of the, um, the uh, SDKs, either one or two, had a similar type of lens, which is why people think almost that those were better. But of course, we went with the Fresnel. Uh, type lenses in the yeah, two it releases helps to help get a wider effect. that yeah. and also helps minimize screen yeah. effect. so so i mean optical stuff's going to be refined and yep. you know that we're early adopters you're going to have some issues but you know we're going to learn as we go so, but, but i thought that there were great optics I so really one of the neat things that they did they showed integration with the uh inspire one mm -hmm. that an app uh, you put into your phone right. and then you yeah, you have it was pretty cool because for you the could, camera like, now the problem with it is as cool as it was the there was lag in the video feed. Like I, I checked, if you look at the video that we shot, like Sean was using it and he was moving back and forth, the camera was almost instantaneous when you were looking around. Video it was following was your head there. tracking. There wasn't lag there. There was lag in the video feed. So when you did this, the cam, you know, you see it would, it would just be a slight lag, which in VR is a big no-no. Yeah. That's... And so you could get sick from doing that potentially. But it was a really cool concept. And yeah. if you have. A and VR one, and you have. I mean, technically, I guess it's not part of the VR one. That yeah. app is independent. Of True. VR yeah. One. So if you have an Inspire one, and you wanna, you know, do something like that. Yep. You might do that. Right. That's the thing is, I'd love to be able to use the gear, the gear VR, VR. for that. The gear R <laughs> is for that because, but the problem is, of course, your phone plugs into the gear VR to use the extra electronics. You can't plug it into the yeah. video feed from your Inspire. So that's what's nice about the. Can nice you know one. if you plug in the the uh, USB into that little sub port? That. Uh, I thought that was only charge only. I have no idea. I've never right, but it if you if you turn off the, the that's another that's another. I have no idea. Stuff. I have no <laughs> idea. Yeah, try it. All right, you guys, let's talk real quick before we end the video. VR. VR. Um, Sean and I have been more immersed into it. Uh, we did. You get a chance to try it. Though. We did get a chance yeah. to try it. I guess from a user standpoint, um, I, the Vive. I mean, I got to try out the Vive at your house actually um, before NIB, but at trying it also at the at the NIB booth. Um, it was interesting they had some uh, basically like interior design um, apps going where it was like you could go through your space and really switch out like furniture and design things and it was it was interesting how your the teleportation kind of worked with the Vive like you could teleport around it wasn't because they didn't have the room scale going um, you, you could move around and and look around and I thought it was really well done as far as being able to you know see things like in a 3d space and move around and um, it's exciting to me because like I, I like to work in that kind of space too like to be able to potentially like paint in 3d or you know model in 3d like in that virtual reality space is really exciting it's a lot easier to get scale right there too yeah yeah like exactly. I, was I was listening to some game developers talk about how they would do a level and they would look right in 2d and then they would go into VR and like oh my gosh scales all off so yeah. then they would you know mm -hmm. to be actually so they got to the point where one person would stay in VR the other person would stay in 2D. Mm -hmm. Of course, then they would like drop an alligator behind their head. And turn <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's. I don't think it's available to public, but using, I think Unity, you can actually model right with the Vive and using, or with the Rift with the Touch, right in VR and build your, um, build your, your, uh, your play area, whatever scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, I'm amazed when you immerse yourself into it. You've got the headset on. Um, how very quickly you just believe you're in this world mm -hmm. and um, and everything everything around you to the left to the right above below um, is is so true that um, you quickly just get lost in the game and until all of a sudden you hear a voice reminding you that you're in a room full of friends you're uh, you're just in that world and uh, I think it's a you know kudos to whoever developed um, you know the just the detail that goes into it because uh, I forget the particular game we were playing, what the name of it was. Um, Which the zombie so shooting one? Yeah. Oh gosh, <laughs> that one was scary. Brookhaven, the Brookhaven experiment. Brookhaven. Brookhaven was uh, yeah. <laughs> there like space paratrainer we we're trying. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There there were several. Yeah. There were, it's yeah. I, that's why I, I like. 
I don't know. I don't know if VR is ever going to be perfect for storytelling as a whole. Um, it's it's just tough to say at this point. Yeah. Uh, because there are limitations. You know, the thing we I always argued against for three D um, is that in three D you as a DP you, you want to choose a lens because it's the right thing. You want to set your focus in a specific area. This is the right thing for the storytelling. But when you're forcing somebody's eyes to focus on something, especially in a longer lens, our eyes aren't long, our eyes are wide. So on a longer lens, you're focusing it. It's like, it's not, it hurt, It can hurt your eyes. It just isn't the right user experience. Um, in VR, you know, there's a lot of creative things that are stripped away from you. You feel like you're there, but you can't just focus on one little thing. I can't just, you know, there's a, a creepy guy walking up behind you. I can leave him out of focus and just focus on your eyes as the as the tension builds. You can't do that. You're no, you're wide, you're, so yeah. you're there. So storytelling has to change for it. Yeah, to correctly. I uh, read an article that was uh, you know a VR um, film isn't a Easter egg hunt. So it's like you know it really takes you out of the experience when you have to like try to find what's going on or there's multiple things going on. No, it really. Need, um, so there'd be there's, a lot. There's, there's a big a, learning curve with I, how the storytelling. Have you heard about Eve? Abe in VR, there's like a robot um, that's like loves people and he, he doesn't feel love from them, so like he starts going on like this murderous thing. And you mentioned that to me, I haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, it's it, I think it's just about to come out. Um, and the idea is that you're like strapped to this chair and, and this this robot that uh, is gonna start torturing you or something like that. <laughs> um, so like it's a unique storytelling experience. It fits for that medium. Like you're sitting there. And the robot's right there, and he's doing stuff around you, and you're te- yeah. theoretically you wouldn't be able to move. Cinema's not going to go away, basically. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. the uh, the immersiveness of VR is totally different. So, mm-hmm. anyways, uh, I think 360 videos got some neat potential, um, and because of the of the overall limitations of it, if it's something we're going to do, it's going to be a novelty. It's not a true VR experience, but it does allow. A, there, it's a novelty. It allows a cool way to experience something you normally wouldn't be able right. to. Mm-hmm. So let's not spend a ton of money to do the production for now. So that's right. why the Gear 360... We'll let all the big players yeah. spend all that money. Yeah. So, all right, <laughs> cool. That's VR. Thanks again to our, our sponsor, Black Magic Design, for making our NAB coverage possible. And be sure to check out the rest of our coverage for all of the cool other NAB stuff. Thanks.